Hey guys, welcome back to Based MMA. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night Grosso versus Shevchenko 2. We have a flyweight title this Saturday for a UFC Fight Night card. And I'm very happy that the UFC has decided to put a woman title fight as a UFC Fight Night. And I think this is good because... You bring more eyeballs to the title fight. There's more attention to it rather than it being a co-main cool event for a pay-per-view. And it makes it it makes the fight actually a little bit more excited. Like I'm actually looking forward to Alexa Grosso versus Valentina Shevchenko too now that it's the headliner of a UFC fight night. More than if it would have been a co-main cool event or the feature fight of a pay-per-view. I think this is a lot more exciting, guys. And I think this card is actually pretty good. Like I think there's some decent fights on, on here. Honestly, there might be some... I think this card might be a little bit ba better than the pay-per-view we just got uh, this last week. And, I mean, I know it's not... Nothing's going to rival the the upset that Sean Strickland just had against Israel Asanya. But nonetheless, I think the, this card actually has uh, some better fights on the card, guys. But let's take a look at this card, man. And I'm not going to break down every single fight. I'm just going to give you guys my picks. I'm going with Josephine Nutson by decision. I'm going with, uh, I don't think it's Nathan Levi. I think it's Charlie Campbell. I'm going with Charlie Campbell by decision. Uh, I'm going with Jasmine Josephidicious. Uh, she had a good performance over Miranda Maverick that I really uh, thought was really impressive. Her grappling looked pretty good. And also, she looked pretty good on the feet as well. I'm going with Edgar Chires. Daniel Lacerda is like, he's lost like four fights in a row. He's been finished quite a lot. Roman Kal Kopilov, I think this is a prospect to look out for the card, man. This guy has some, he's had like four incredible finishes coming off that head kick in July. Um, I think he should win this fight by TKO. Um, Lope Godinez. I'm going with Lope Godinez to win this one by unanimous decision. I don't think Reed is very good, to be totally honest with you. Um, now, to start off with the main card, I'm going with Fernando Padilla to win this fight by K, uh, TKO. Um, I don't think Kyle Nelson is impressive anywhere. I'm also going with Daniel. And now let's break down this fight. I think this fight is uh, worthy of being breaking, uh, breaking down. That is Raul Rosas Jr. versus Terrence Mitchell, guys. And I think this is a really good fight for Raul Rosa Jr., guys. I mean, let's be honest. He kind of got exposed in his last fight a li just a little bit. I mean, there was so much hype behind him. You know, the youngest fighter in the UFC currently, you know, he looked incredible in his first fight in December where he submitted that guy in the first round. That guy was a, a veteran. I forgot his name, but he I know he was like a lot older in age. And Raul Rosa Jr. looked pretty good in that fight. He looked really strong in the grappling, great grappling transition and was able to get the guillotine. But in this fight, guys, I just think that I just think this is a really good fight with him. Uh, Terrence Mitchell is coming off his loss against Cameron Simon in this at uh, UFC 290, and I thought Terrence Mitchell looked absolutely terrible, guys. I, I thought he looked like weak. I thought he looked like he didn't want to be there, and I don't know, man. I, I just think this is kind of an easy fight for Raul Rosas Jr., man. I, I do think Terrence Mitchell maybe could survive the first round and make the fight a little bit more competitive, but I think Raul Rosas Jr., is going to improve after his fight versus Christian Rodriguez, where I kind of felt like he kind of blew his load in the first round. And, you know, Christian Rodriguez was better than he thought he was going to be, especially on the feet, and was able to run away with that second and third round. But, I mean, he also, Christian Rodriguez did end up grappling in that fight and started to get the better of the grappling exchanges as well because I think Raul Rosas used a lot of his energy in the first round. So I think coming into this fight, he's going to be a little bit more patient, implement a more... Um, grappling heavy approach as he always does but I think he's going to be a little bit more patient in his transitions and I think if he doesn't get the finish right away I think he's going to do a better job I hope he's improved his striking man because he looked incredibly slow twitch and slow with his hands so I hope he's been improving his striking but I think this is a really good matchup for Raul Rosa Jr. and I think he's going to be able to get the submission in the first round I think he's strong enough He's I think he's strong enough to get the submission and beat somebody like Terrence Mitchell so I'm going with Raul Rosa Jr. to win by submission. Now moving on to the to the best fight on the card, Kevin Holland versus JDM guys. And I've been hot, I've been switching on this fight. Like one day I'm picking Kevin Holland, the next day I'm picking JDM. I think this is a very interesting matchup. I mean, there's a lot of factors here. There's a lot of factors. I think people are underestimating JDM because of his last performance. Like people need to take into consideration that that was at a one week notice. I mean, his opponent pulled out of UFC 290. He was supposed to fight um, 
Sean, uh, what's his name? The guy that fought below. I'm blanking on his name. I forgot his name. I'm blanking on his name, but you guys know who I'm talking about. This is a guy that just got TKO'd by Bilal Muhammad. But anyway, guys, JDM's performance versus Hot Fist, that guy, I think is being a little bit overlooked and a little bit twisted. Like, I know JDM was making a lot of mistakes in the way he was, you know, kind of accepting the ground, going for submissions and stuff like that, rather than keeping the fight on the feet and trying to get up. But I still think JDM is a very dangerous fighter on the feet. And I don't see Kevin Holland implementing like a grappling approach to this fight. Kevin Fo Kevin Holland isn't a fighter that is grappling. He has very good submission, very good submission defense as well. So I, if anything, if the only way I really see Kevin Holland getting a win here by a finish is by a submission rather than a TKO. Um, he is a very rangy, lengthy striker. Kevin Holland does have a lot of power in his hands. This is a guy that used to fight in the middleweight division, used to knock out middleweights. And, but I just think JDM has a different kind of power in the welterweight division. And when it comes to inside boxing, inside striking, I think JDM it just has a lot more power. is a lot more technical than somebody like Kevin Holland. And I could just see him putting Kevin Holland on the back foot and Kevin Holland kind of just moving around the cage. JDM closing the distance here. And... You know, I, I, I could see Kevin Holland maybe clipping him, but if you ask me out of the two, who do I think is going to take a shot better? I think JDM is more likely to take a shot better. And I think a lot of people are kind of underestimating JDM because of that last performance. But, like, we have to take into consideration that that was on a one-week notice. Um, you know, his he had a very good opponent that implemented a great game plan against him that was just grappling, holding him against the cage, landing good strikes. Uh, but JDM was still landing really good strikes to the body, really good jabs and, and one-twos and stuff like that on that guy. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration in this matchup, guys. And honestly, I think I'm going here with JDM by decision. I think Kevin, Kevin Holland is a very durable opponent. And, I mean, I... I don't know. This is a hard fight. I mean, Kevin Holland hasn't really been finished. I know technically he was finished against Wonder Boy, but that fight got stopped uh, by the doctor. But also Kevin Holland, like, in that fight, he injured his right hand, I believe. I think it was his right hand that he injured. So it did kind of, like, change the the tide of the fight where Kevin Holland was a little bit more competitive. I mean, he did drop Wonder Boy in that first round. But once Kevin Holland's hand was injured, you could tell he was injured. He wasn't throwing it. Wonder Boy really started to piece him up in the striking and really mix it up pretty well. Um, but I think JDM just has a lot more power than even somebody like Steven Thompson. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's not as he's not a better kickboxer, but I think with the hands, I think JDM is just a lot better here. So I'm going to go here with J JDM by decision. I think this is going to be a war. This is a very competitive fight. Um, I'm picking JDM, but this is not like a confident pick. Like, I'm not super confident that he's going to win, but I'm leaning JDM to win this fight by decision. Now, moving on to the main event of the evening, guys, and I'm very excited for this fight. Like I said, I'm happy that this fight is the main event of a UFC fight night. I think it makes the fight a little bit more exciting rather than it be, you know, the co-main event or the, or the third fight of a pay-per-view. And it just makes it better for it to be a UFC fight night. I think there's going to be a lot more eyeballs on it. And I do have a lot of notes for this fight, guys, because I did go back to rewatch the first fight because I felt like, like I remembered the fight, but I, I wanted to make sure that my perspective on the fight was, was accurate because I, I kind of felt like the narrative after the fight was kind of that Alexa Grosso was destroying Valentina Shevchenko on the feet and just getting the better of her, and Valentina had to resort to grappling. And part, part of that is true, but like on rewatch, I felt like the fight was not as close as I had remembered. Um, some of my main takeaways from the first encounter was that Grosso had a difficult time landing in the unorthodox stance. Once Grosso switched to southpaw, she began to land more significant strikes. Valentina adapted to that by implementing uh, more grappling. And she started to win the rounds by her wrestling. And something that like really caught my eye on rewatch was that Alexa Grosso was so slow to defend the takedowns, man. She was like slow twitch, very slow to defend the takedowns. Um... And she knew they were coming too, and I, and I kind of felt like part of the reason why she was really bad at uh, 
at um defending the takedowns was because of her like stance like her boxing stance it just makes it very hard to drop your hands to defend the takedown and that boxing approach kind of makes it easier for her for her to get taken down and you know i thought grosso had poor takedown defense due to her boxing stance low to defend um like I said, Shevchenko was taking Grosso down at will. She was clearly... Grosso won the first round, and then the second and third, Valentina Shevchenko was winning. And also the fourth, I thought she was winning the round. Up until she started to... She did a spinning thing, and Grosso was able to take her back and submit her. I thought Valentina was on her way to win that fight. Um, I know Valentina, after the fight, kind of talked about that loss as if it was a fluke but it really wasn't a fluke i mean she made a mistake and alexa grasso capitalized on it i don't think that should be considered a fluke it wasn't any crazy injury or anything like that but i think this fight is very close guys and this is also one of those fights that i've been kind of switching back and forth some days i think grasso some days i think valentina shevchenko um but i think there's also other factors that we need to consider in this matchup one valentina Tereschenko is 35 years old you know she's getting up there in age and i think she's going to start to decline and i think we've started to see a little bit of her decline i mean prior to that to that grasso first matchup um she fought talia santos where a lot of people thought she kind of lost i thought it was a very close fight that she, she that she won i thought she won three three out of the two rounds and then Prior to that, I mean, she smoked Lauren Murphy, but, I mean, it's Lauren Murphy, so I don't really take too much from that fight. Um, but bottom line, guys, bottom line, I think that out of the two fighters, the one that needs to make more improvements in this matchup is Alexa Grosso. I think she needs to implement a more... Uh, I need to... I, think actually, I actually think she needs to grapple a little bit... Um, what else did I put? I, I think she's going to be very confident also coming into this fight, man, that she knows that she could beat somebody like Valentina Shevchenko. You know, prior to that, Valentina Shevchenko considered one of the greatest women fighters of all time. I mean, she still is, right? But when Valentina Shevchenko hadn't lost in such a long time, since I think the Nunez decision, it, it was just a, an uphill battle for Alexa Grosso, I'm sure, physically and mentally. And now that she knows, hey, man, I could submit her. If she makes a mistake, I could get her down. She had success on the feet. I think Alexa Grosso is going to come in a little bit more hungry. I think she's going to be the one to make the more improvements coming into the fight more than Valentina Shevchenko. Because if Valentina Shevchenko just thinks, man, I was doing so good, I'm just going to do the same thing, and I'm going to end up winning. I'm just not going to throw any spinning stuff, and I'll win the fight. I think that kind of opens the fight up more for Alexa Grasso to end up winning, guys. So, ultimately, I am going to pick Alexa Grasso to win this fight. Um, I was kind of leaving Alexa Grasso by decision, but I'm actually going to... I'm going to be a little bit risky here. I'm, I think I'm going to go with Alexa Grasso by TKO. I think she's going to end up finishing Valentina Shevchenko. Um, but I, I, it's not a confident um, method, to be totally honest. I think it, the more confident method that I would go for would be Alexa Grosso by decision. But I think it's a it's a very competitive fight. Um, but I still think, even if Valentina Shevchenko, I mean, it depends how she ends up winning. But I think she's on the decline, man. I mean, she's 35 years old. There's a lot of contenders coming out coming up in the flyweight division. We got Aaron Blanchfield. We got Manon Fioro. Um, you know what I'm saying? So the division is starting to get a little bit more interesting now. The winner of this, in my opinion, should fight Aaron Blanchfield. I think Aaron Blanchfield is due for a title shot now. Man in field is also next in line, in my opinion. So it's good to see some movement in this women's flyweight division, guys. But yeah, guys, ultimately, I'm going to go with Alexa Grasso, guys, for to win this fight and still. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the predictions. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.